So uh, thank you very much for inviting me along to uh, present today. So um, as part of my presentation, I just really want to talk about how we can make a difference within the lab of small changes that we can make and um, to make to uh, just in everyday practices to be more environmentally friendly, to be more sustainable. Uh, as a lecturer, we have learning outcomes. So hopefully just as part of this talk, you'll be able to understand that relationship as been mentioned between climate emergency and the public health and why we have to have a responsibility to make changes in our practice. I want you to be able to consider what those changes can be to meet the sustainability agenda and also gain knowledge of uh, quick sustainable wins that we can take in pathology. So but as my background, uh, yes, so I've had 20, 21, 22 years in, of lab experience and I use that experience to be able to highlight hotspots in pathology practice um, I'm, and because of my professional role I'm maintaining my links with the IBMS and have become their sustainability lead and rep um, and, and so I'm working with the ACB group and with the e EFLM to try and uh, foster sustainable ideas within uh, our lab practitioners. So we've got we're seeing a changing climate. We've seen that in the slides previously uh, already today, but it's we're looking at increased levels of heart disease, increased levels of stroke, lung cancer, and increased spreads of infectious diseases. And all of this is a response because of the frequent heat rays, the extreme weather events, and the raises in temperature that we're, that we're seeing because of the climate, changing climate. So yes, we're, we're seeing fire, wildfires. Wildfires increase the chances of um, lung um, problems. We're seeing droughts. The droughts mean that you've got limited access to clean water, so we might see increases in infections. And the, and the floods, the floods are, I mean, water contamination. And whenever we see disease, that means an increase in testing within the lab. So not only have we got this responsibility for our, our own futures with, with climate, but also in, in terms of workload. If we can make some positive changes that might make a small dent in these uh, extreme events, we're going to ultimately help our own, ourselves and our working practice. So we need to act. And as a profession, we take, need to take more action towards, to more, towards a more sustainable future. Um, it's all about um, being responsible. It's about um, highlighting to individuals that we in everyday practice that we need to make these changes in our personal and professional lives as a professional responsibility. So um, and I advocate for the principles of sustainable health care that have been put forward by the um, Centre for Sustainable Health Care is about prevention. It's about promoting health and preventing disease by actually tackling the causes of the illnesses and inequalities. So we can do that um, by getting out there by spreading the word, by um, if undertaking CPD events. It's about empowering patients to a greater role to manage their own health. So it is, again, it's about information sharing. It's about a lean service delivery, streamlining care systems to minimise waste. So I, And you need to identify that, where those wasteful scenarios are to be able to make a difference. And looking at low carbon alternatives. So when we're thinking about quality improvement, thinking about what technologies we need, need, what new tests we can bring in, what changes we can make in our practice, whether we can utilise point of care to limit our carbon footprint and our other social impacts. So let's think about that environment impact of healthcare. We've got the energy use with on site that it, what our labs contribute to. We've got the gases that we use in our methods. We've got the travel, not only of our, our patients and their carers, but also the staff. So we need to think about the ways of working that we have in our labs. Thinking about that medical equipment, thinking about where we purchase that equipment, whether we're working with suppliers and also the procurement um, system. And when we go out to tender, thinking about what we, we can incorporate sustainably into that tender. Thinking about the IT equipment that we use, thinking about our emissions, then even thinking about our tea room and food production and whether we foster um, a vegetarian day or um, what we do with our um, um, waste from that food. And looking at our disposal, whether that's recycling our materials, where, where, which waste streams we're using, whether we're using local companies for that waste stream to limit that environmental uh, footprint. Um, if you want to know a bit more about your carbon footprint, um, you can do a quick quiz by uh, 
the uh, WWF, that actually gives you a, a chance to actually calculate your own um, carbon footprint. Because if you're going to take this, it gives you a, a deeper understanding of where that carbon is coming from. It sort of highlights that uh, circular um, economy of thinking about sometimes it's much, not just about getting something that's more efficient or more sustainable, but whether the impact of the manufacture of that new uh, piece of a uh, say fridge it will have a higher carbon footprint than maybe uh, purchasing a second hand one or maintaining the one we've got. It gives you things about how we travel, where we go on holiday, what we eat. So I invite you to have a go at that. So it's all about looking at those, identifying the scopes and where the hotspots are within healthcare and thinking about how the lab fits into those. Do we have uh, heat capture uh, facilities with our equipment um, to, to to refocus any heat coming from our big analyzers into colder areas of the lab. Do we have, um, when we're looking at our equipment and our IT, do we have things switched off that don't need to be on? Do we use minus 70 rather than minus 80 freezers? When we look, at, it's about looking at that scope, scope two and three, thinking about what equipment our suppliers and how sustainable their agendas are do they have a way of, of measuring their carbon footprint of their kits, of their, of their uh, equipment? And then you can help actually make calculations on the carbon of the testing that we're doing. And so, and also thinking about the social impact. It's not just about that carbon footprint. It's about thinking about the air pollution of our waste, uh, thinking about uh, where our sites are, any um, impacts on loss of biodiversity, thinking about the depletion of our resources, the bioaccumulation of toxicity of our chemicals that we're using from our kits, and any plastic pollution. pollution uh, plastic is a big problem in healthcare. Yes, it has um, great benefits uh, for health and safety, for de decreased contamination, but the amount of plastic that we're seeing, are there, we need to start asking, are there uh, um, bioplastics out there that can do as good a job that won't impact on our quality but have a better um, um, lasting effect on the environment. Labs have an important role to play. Um, this has come from my green lab and it, it's estimated that 5.5 billion kilograms of, um, um, of plastic are being produced. That's equivalent to uh, 67 cruise liners of plastic waste per year. Labs use 10 times more electric than normal office spaces. They use four times more water. And this, as I say, it's all about thinking about what we do and what impact. And it's just walking into the lab and asking some of the questions, looking at everyday practices and think, can we do that slightly different? So if we think about the sheer number of tests that are coming through a pathology lab, 1.1 billion, that's what's contributing to that water, that energy and that plastic. So, that, so I think sometimes it's not about necessarily changing what we do. Sometimes it's thinking about reducing the wastage. If we can reduce the number of tests that come through, then maybe we can reduce that overall impact. So it may, it's when programs such as getting it right first time, looking at um, auditing our um, um, error rates, looking at where we can utilize point of care instead of sending that main sample to the laboratory, then you might have that uh, looking at areas of potentially um, save, making a saving. Next slide, please. So carbon testing has a carbon impact. These stats have come from the Callisto Tales study um, from 2020, and it shows you that um, a UNE can uh, can have a carbon impact of 99 grams uh, of carbon emissions. Uh, a full blood count can have 116 grams. A blood glucose can have 49 grams. So thinking about how many tests go through that, those billions of tests that are going through the lab, thinking if we can just reduce, reduce that error rate, then we're going to save carbon. So let's look at that unnecessary testing. Let's think about what we're doing, what we can change, and think about how we can foster communication with our clinical co colleagues to ensure or utilize AI to ensure that we're only doing the tests that we need to do, that we're only ordering the tests that need to be done. So let's have a look at those areas of focus. Uh, 
back, if you can click uh, four times for me, please. Let's look at the waste and reducing plastics. Uh, next click, water and greener chemistry, thinking about what we use. Look at that, uh, thinking about um, potentially alternatives to formulate designing, for example. Uh, click, reducing the energy, or identifying equipment in the lab that can be turned off or use timers to reduce the amount of equipment that needs to be switched on 24 seven, seven days a week. And so, and looking at ways to identify those things can come quite easier if we look at green uh, certification for the lab. So it's a way of highlighting to our um, service users that we consider sustainability to be important. So you can look at my green lab certification this is looking at focusing on scopes one and two. So looking at making our operations within our, the lab more sustainable and also helping to think about that purchasing. Looking at um, EFLM, it's about uh, they have produced guidelines. So it's reading those guidelines, doing your research and looking at, at using those in their checklists to see if you can make carbon savings, even if you don't want to go all the way to certification. It's looking about Utilising, if you want to go down the route of certification, utilising EFM's certification so we can ensure that we've got a healthy, safe, and safe, efficient lab and get those conversations with our lab manners, managers and looking to achieve sustainable goals. And they utilise a, a traffic light system. They actually look at you, your responses to questions. They look at the criteria and they will give you a red, green or yellow um, feedback on how with, um, you're meeting those green lab criteria. Or there's LEAF. LEAF is a UK based um, certification program. It has been running in research labs for a number of years now. And in the past year, they've been holding seven um, clinical lab pilots. We're waiting for the results on um, at least two labs that I'm aware of have got bronze certification, Newcastle and um, Preston. Um, but um, but is and uh, I'm sure Rob Shorten uh, will be willing to, to talk to you if anyone wants to know more about his experience with LEAF. But again, it's it's having this um, checklist and working to, to this framework, meeting objectives of this framework, and then being an awarded bronze, silver, or gold, depending on how of those sustainable actions that you are able to take within the lab. Even if we've not got a clinical lab program fully operational yet, you can you can always adopt the research based LEAF program, the LEAF framework. You just have to remember that there are some a disparity between research quality requirements and your clinical lab requirements. Just a bit more about LEAF. So LEAF doesn't just look at what we do in the lab. It looks at the people. What, what are we doing in practice? What differences can, pe that can people make? It looks at the waste. It looks and it's looking at segregation and recycling as part of that waste. What can we do differently with our waste streams? It allows us to have an environmental impact scoring um, of our what we're doing with that waste and where it's going. It's looking at purchasing, looking at what we purchase, how we purchase and the environmental impact of that equipment or products. It looks at IT, looking at how we pack those PCs up out. It's looking at the samples and chemicals and looking at our ventilation. And here's an example of, of a really good green initiative that um, Newcastle hospitals uh, implemented. So they were looking at the plastic waste from uh, the, the single use bags that specimens came in, and they've actually managed to eliminate those specimen bags. And that's actually saved the trust at about five pounds per day. So making small changes can not only have a, an environmental impact, but can have a financial positive as well. So the aim to, of the project was to introduce these reusable boxes um, and they did it in that, both the phlebotomy and then wanted to move out to the GP. And, and what they found was they, they had that money saving, they saved that five pound per day. Um, they, looked, they thought about the transport and, and what the response was that they actually reduced the turnaround times in the lab, they reduced the error rates because the training had to be good to have all the frontline checks done by the phlebotomy. So the, the, because the frontline was ha uh, checks were doing with the staff taking the blood, um, less work was required in the lab to do those checks, more sample 
was were acceptable because the checks had been pre-done, and um, and so that and so the actual transport boxes save money and improve patient um, care. They also looked at transport. They looked at um, greener ways of transporting those samples. So they utilizing um, bikes. They you and click next uh, click please. They looked at drones. So in remote places when you haven't got um, many samples coming in, it's not uh, environmentally viable to have um, to have uh, vans picking up one or two samples. So what they did was they um, they utilised different methods to pick up those small numbers because a big of the part of the uh, impact of um, your transport of samples uh, and the carbon footprint. Sorry, the big impact of carbon footprint. So it's thinking about our policies. We need green policies in our lab. And quite often you need one individual that's going to sort of rally others within the lab. You need to think about rational test ordering. We need to think about the green policy of that reuse of it, what equipment can be reused, repurposed, thinking about what we can reduce to our solid waste. And do we have conversations with our, our procurement companies or whether they'll take um, uncontaminated plastics or cut packaging back and to be reused? Thinking about a paperless policy in the lab, thinking about what we can use, uh, where we can utilise tablets, um, where we can, uh, thinking about where our energy comes from, thinking about resource sharing. So some quick wins. Do we have recycling bins in all the labs and non-lab areas? Do we review our freezer contents regularly and discard items not needed to utilise freezer space? Do we, do we maintain those freezers? Do we check the airflow? Do we have them set at minus 70 if we can? Do we perform audits on our iPads to reduce printing? Think about what do we do digitally to reduce that printing? Thinking about non-lab stuff, um, do they work from home on a rotated basis? We need that face-to-face -face contact, but does it have to be every day of the week? Do we have um, initiatives within the lab to look at greener transport options on certain days? Do we have vegetarian days? Do we utilise electronic signatures and file sharing? Do we look at our email and have a green policy linked to our email usage and utilise SharePoints? Because there is a carbon footprint even to the average email. The bigger the email, the bigger the carbon footprint. So let's think about, can we send an attach, can we send a link and to a SharePoint site rather than sending attached? Can we have a policy that promotes sending less unnecessary emails? Do we, can we copy less people into those emails? Can we, do we make sure we regularly delete our email? And what are we subscribed to that we don't actually read? So think about becoming a green champion. Think about promoting green practice. Think about having um, just a, a 10 minute talk in your induction about the climate health crisis and what we can do. And I, I invite you to join the network, the growing number of professionals um, that are looking at more greener ways of practice, sharing practice, in sharing resources via the Clinical Lab Susnet. Thank you very much.